All right, in uh, this module, we're gonna do a couple demonstrations uh, to try to talk about the different types of mechanical properties. So let's start with the first one. So uh, for this demo, uh, I want you to look around your house or wherever you're at your dorm um, and see if you can find something like one of these items. Uh, so if you have some gummy worms, that's great. Uh, go grab one of those. Uh, maybe you have a rubber band or something similar uh, or a hair scrunchie, something like that. See if you can find an item like that around your house. Um, and then what we're gonna do is try to answer these questions. So uh, basically what you uh, once you've got your item, uh, you're going to try to fracture it. So try to break it. And then you're gonna answer the following questions. Also, it says try to fracture it. You don't actually have to break it um, if you're worried about it. You know, if it's something precious to you, don't actually break it, uh, but at least, you know, try, act like you're gonna try. Um, and then answer the following types. What kind of stress state did you put your sample in, right? Think about the stress states we've talked about in the previous modules. Um, and then uh, use words that uh, that you know of to describe the mechanical properties. So this doesn't have to be the exact term. It can be more colloquial or uh, casual terms, but see if you can describe the mechanical properties of the sample, you know, either something like a gummy worm, a rubber band, or something like a hair scrunchie. So go grab that, uh, pause this video, uh, see if you can do this demo yourself at your home or at your dorm, um, and then uh, come back, answer those questions, and then we'll kind of discuss this together. All right, so uh, I'm here. I've got the um, I've got a couple of those items I talked about on the slide. Uh, so I've got my rubber band. I've got a hair band or scrunchie. Um, I wasn't able to to locate any gummy worms. That's the preferred test method. So I recommend uh, going to get that if if you don't. Uh, but it'll do for for these. So um, so basically, you're gonna look at the item right that we have, and then we're gonna to load this. Uh, we're going to try to apply force, right? And we're going to try to fracture it, but we don't have to. Um, and then we're going to talk about uh, the mechanical properties, right? So I'm going to start with the, the rubber band, right? So, you know, if you're familiar with rubber bands, typically what you do is, you know, you pull it, right? And so pulling, uh, as you're aware from the previous slides, is another way of talking about tension, right? So tension is the stress state that we're pulling this rubber band. So when I stretch it, it gets longer, right? And then the important thing is when I release it, it goes back to its original shape, right? Unless I break it. Uh, but even if I break it, it'll go back to the original shape. It'll just have a, a fracture in it. So, you know, this is something that returns to its original shape. So that's kind of the important thing I wanted you to take away from this. And the same thing with like a gummy worm or this hair band. If you pull them, and this one's uh, been attacked by my cat, so I'll be careful with it. But if you pull it, right, it up takes some force, but you can stretch it or put it in uh, tension. And then if you release that force, it'll go back to its original shape, right? So that's the important part that I wanted you to get um, out of this. So, you know, if, if you weren't successful in finding an object um, until now, uh, what I want you to do is go around your house and look for things that if you apply some type of force, it will go back to its original shape, right? So this is under tension, right? If we try to put uh, put it under compression, it really doesn't do much, right? Things like this uh, don't uh, respond well to, to compression. So this is something in tension. But there are other objects that respond well uh, to compression. So you might think of something like, uh, like that as well. So, um, and so that's just kind of what we wanted to show with this is it rebounds, it returns to its original shape. So that's what I wanted you to take away from this first uh, demonstration. All right, so we're gonna go back to the slides and we're gonna try another demonstration. All right, so now on to the second demo that I want you to look at. So now, um, again, kind of go around your house or dorm or wherever you're at and see if you can find an object like one of the following. Uh, maybe something like a Laffy Taffy. Um, and you might be able to tell from, at this point, uh, these demos were designed around food. Uh, so if you've got some food, uh, that's great. So uh, something like a Laffy Taffy. 
if you've got uh, some Silly Putty, that would be great as well. Or uh, in a pinch, maybe some gum, uh, although I don't recommend this one quite as much. Uh, so see if you can grab something um, like that. It doesn't have to be food, but see if you can think of something with similar uh, properties. And again, answer the same questions. Try to fracture uh, the sample um, and then um, tell me what type of stress state you put it under and then describe the mechanical properties uh, of these objects. All right, so see if you can do that, pause the video, and then um, I'll do a demo as well uh, when you come back and have answered the questions on the quiz. All right, we're back here for the second demo. And so I was only able to find uh, some strawberry Laffy Taffy. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna be working with. But again, uh, if you have something else like Silly Putty or gum or other similar items, which you'll see in a second, uh, feel free to grab those and use that for the demo. And so, so here, so you might have some variety here in terms of what stress you wanna apply. So you might've tried to uh, compress it like this, or you might've tried to uh, again, pull it in tension, so something like this, right? So there's a number of ways you can stress uh, this material, uh, but if you're familiar with how Laffy Taffy is made, it's actually made by pulling it, so that's what I'll stick with for this. But you could also do a, a shear, right, torsion. Uh, so there's a twist that we have with torsion. So there's multiple states, but the important thing from all of them, right? So let's start with compression. So if we compress it, it deforms, it changes shape, right? And unlike the uh, rubber band or gummy worm, it doesn't go back to its original shape. It maintains the shape that you deformed it into, right? Same thing with tension. If we pull this, we're applying a force and it's extending, right? And then if we stop, it maintains the same shape, right? And same thing with the twisting which I'll try to do again. If I put it under torsion, right, like this, you see that it's twisting and you can actually see the twist in it. And if I stop, it's not springing back to its original uh, shape, right? So that's the key kind of takeaway that I wanted you to get with this. So something that if you deform it, it will change shape, but it doesn't revert back to its original when that force or load is um, taken off, right? So these are the kind of two differences in these materials. One where it re returns to its original shape and one where it uh, maintains the shape that you deformed it into. So that's the takeaway I wanted you to get from these two demos. And so we're gonna go back to the slides and we're gonna talk about what this means on an atomic scale with the materials that we've been talking about in class so far. All right, so those two demos that we just did illustrate a key difference in the two the two main types of material response to mechanical force. And so those are elastic and plastic. And we're gonna start with elastic because that was the first one we did. And so here we have a, a test sample. So we did this with a you know, gummy worm, a rubber band, or a hair band. Um, but you can just as well imagine this as a metal or a ceramic or a polymer. And so we have, in this case, um, atoms. You can see they're in a kind of close packed arrangement. So that's just one little part of this material. And then we're gonna see what happens when we apply a tensile stress. But the same thing can be realized with compression as well, but we're just gonna start with tensile. So we apply a force, right? Here it's a tensile force. This it extends the material. You can see the delta here. It's a small amount uh, that it's extended. And so that means that the atoms within this material um, have to get stretched apart, right? So these bonds are basically stretching. And so these planes of atoms are getting further and further apart, right? So a force is applied and that force, that energy goes into um, furthering the bond distance. And then if we release it, it goes back to its initial. Right, so the 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 re, the release is an important in this case. It's reversible, and that's what elastic is all about. So if we have elastic response, it means that the 
uh, extension or the compression, whatever it is, is reversible. And so in this case, um, there are a couple types of elastic behavior. The majority of what we're going to talk about is called linear elastic. The extension is proportional to the force. So if we extend it, um, the force goes up and um, the extension goes up, right, in a linear fashion. That's the most common part, that the, the common type we'll talk about. However, there's also nonlinear elastic, where if you extend it, the force goes up, but then it kind of stalls out um, and changes slope, and then uh, eventually can change again. Um, this is nonlinear. This happens uh, primarily in uh, polymers and um, things like gummy. So that is basically what happens. So basically what this means is that if we keep it extending it, we don't have to apply more and more force. The same force can be applied. And so that's the, the key difference. Whereas in linear elastic materials, the force would have to keep going up in order to stretch it and stretch it and stretch it. So this is the key thing about elastic response. It is reversible. And you saw that with the first demo that we had. However, there are other instances, and we saw uh, in the second demo about this, is that uh, response to an external force causes what we call permanent or plastic deformation. So permanent means it's always going to be there, right? And we saw that with the Laffy Taffy, or if you had Silly Putty um, or gum, those are examples of plastic deformation. It's permanent. So in this case, you again start with a similar type of material, you extend it, um, you can still get elastic behavior. So that can still be part. So the bonds between the atoms stretch, but also they move past one another. So these, um, these atoms, as you can see, uh, move down and these atoms move down. And those uh, movements uh, along planes and so forth, uh, shear, uh, are permanent. And so it's not going to go back to its original shape. If we release the load, the most that will happen is the stretching of the bonds uh, will go back, right? So you can see that the, the distance between atoms is back to the original state, but you can still see that this atom used to be up here and these used to be up here, right? So there's an element of plastic or permanent deformation. And so these often happen together, uh, elastic and plastic. But the elastic part, again, will return once the force is gone. So this is elastic and or, uh, this is plastic. So uh, this is a common behavior that you see for plastic materials is you may have an initial linear portion that's linear elastic. Um, and then the curvature, it starts to deviate from that line. And in this case, that's the plastic portion of the load extension curve. And if we um, unload the force, it will go back down and you'll recover this elastic portion, but you won't recover the plastic. So it's over here, whereas it, if it returned completely, it should be back here. So that's the difference. And these are the two different types of responses that we're going to talk about mainly is elastic and plastic. And we'll start with the elastic behavior of materials in the next couple modules.